this is where it all started and i'm not joking this is where it all started so literally entered the airport entered that terminal like this problems problems Okay, so hi guys, um, welcome to part two of my whole immigration situation, my whole immigration journey, let me put it like that. Um, so on this video, I'm going to now be talking about my journey from, it's going to be like a story time of my journey um, from Nairobi to Canada, airport, all those things, immigration questions and stuff like that. So yeah, so um, let's just start. Um, okay, so got my visa end of August, mid August, end of August, and then now started planning for my flight. Okay, so disclaimer, I had been preparing for my flight for so long, just taking things slowly because I also didn't want to compile the shopping that I needed to do so one thing that i did do because now i did get deferred like i said in my last video into january and we all know january is winter now have i ever seen snow have i ever touched snow no i haven't has nairobi kenya ever reached below 10 degrees no it hasn't so i was of course i was scared and i was nervous for the cold so i did shopping for the cold yeah just because I also knew if I come to Canada during winter and then shop for winter clothing, yeah, during the winter, it was going to be expensive. So it just made sense um, to do at least some shopping in Nairobi. So I'm also going to talk about that. So because somebody asked me about the things to carry, I'm not sure if this is what they actually meant, but I'll just still put it in the video so i did shopping in gikomba i did shopping in toy market i did shopping in town i did shopping in miss in woolworths yeah woolworths um where else did i do shopping i think those are the major places i was going and just looking literally looking around you know so okay in Gikomba, by the way, I got such a good plug in Gikomba and I don't know if I still have his contact. If I do, I might just put it in my description so that you guys can also get your stuff from there because the stuff that he gave me really worked. Like at first I was discouraged by so many people like don't go shopping for winter stuff in Nairobi because it's not going to work when you get here. So I was nervous because I'm like, I've just bought a lot of things. Hey, okay, not that much, but you get what I mean. So I got my winter jackets, all of them from Gikomba. And I got gla Guys, <laughs> if there's one thing that failed me was gloves. I think that's the one thing that properly, properly just backfired on me. Cause I bought like three pairs of gloves, none of them could withstand the cold here none of them so for gloves i'd say just buy one pair just for the sake of having some sort of warmth but if you want gloves just come come to canada and get your gloves from here but the winter jackets i got all work even up to date they've been keeping me going so the guy sold me good stuff and then i also got my winter boots from toy market which also served me because <laughs> the amount of times I would have fallen if I didn't have proper shoes. <laughs> it's crazy. And knowing me, I know I would have fallen. But that's not the point. So yeah, I got my winter boots from Gikomba. And then, yeah, those are the two major, oh, the three things I got. So it was gloves, boots, and jackets. And then my thick scarves, which that one lady in town and that's the worst part you know it was such a random thing like she was just on the road 
and i saw the scarves and i was like that's it and they've served me so well so i don't know if like she could literally have left town i don't know if she's like if she's there every day but that's not the point um so i got my gla my scarves from town and then from toy market i got my body warmers even those body warmers they've really served me well um at first i didn't believe they'd withstand the cold but they really did so that was also a positive and then what else what else yeah woolworths was just stuff like pajamas like random things yeah so that's about it for that department and then now let's get actually into the story so i traveled on december 27th so right after christmas and now got to the airport at around 7 no 8 pm and i thought okay for all the kenyans watching yeah you know how jkia is there's always a line just to enter the just to enter the airport the airport building like your terminal rather let me put it like that so i got there and i was being told oh no you're in a new terminal i'm like ah, this might just this must just mean like a longer queue or something but there was literally nobody so i didn't even have time to say bye to my family properly because the guy was like ah in Araka, in Araka. i was like well okay then so yeah entered the airport this is where it all started and i'm not joking this is where it all started so literally entered the airport entered that terminal like this problems problems so because it was a new terminal there weren't a lot of people and then there was a lady where you have to present your documents yeah so i got to her i show her everything the physical copies and she's like um fungua fungua simu yako unionyeshe rcc document kwa simu so i said okay i didn't have a problem with it so it was basically like show me your document on your phone and i pull up the page the site and it's refusing to work it's like error i'm like i okay so i try again it says error so i show the lady i'm like i um site ni kama me imeanguka like it's not working basically and she's like you know you can't enter without showing me so i told her but is it my fault the the site has refused to work so you guys i stayed there for so long just arguing with this lady not really arguing but trying to make the trying to reload and reload and reload until it finally worked and then went in to the app like to the next stage so now i go to i'm trying to go find my gate and there's like another short short ish line because there's another lady checking your documents so make the line at this point i was in the line <laughs> i was in the line when my flight was supposed to be boarding so me i already knew like i this canada thing i'm not making it like genuinely so i was in the line and then my dad calls me he's like um do you so should we leave the airport i just told him roho safi i was like no <laughs> because i didn't think i was going to make it but anyways so got cleared and then the next stage after you show the lady your documents was they were like security check so they were checking your carry-on luggage now problem number two came in because my suitcase my carry-on suitcase was fine then now my handbag it has a zip yeah so the guy they were using like a strip of paper or something and they spray i don't know how it works but it's a strip and they like they panguza it on your bag i don't know how else to phrase it and then they it shows on the like there's a monitor and it shows if there's anything detected or something like that so he does that on my on my handbag and it shows red it's like explosives detected 
hi i was just like genuinely what do you want me to do i also don't know so now i was like, i was just confused because i was not exactly sure what the heck was going on so the guy looks at me he looks at his co-worker and i was <laughs> I really didn't have anything to say. So he asked me, he's like, Ukona liquids up on Danny? Like, do you have any liquids inside your bag? And I was like, no. So he's like, what an So I'm like, okay. So he tries again. It says the same thing. I'm like, ha. Huh? I was like, I'm not making it. Like, at least I made it to the airport. Like, I tried, you know? So. <laughs> he checks he's like ah fungua zip basi tuone so i try open the zip guys everything was making me just look suspicious because now my zip got stuck and i'm just there and i'm like imekata he's like okay watch an jaribu so he tries to open the zip yeah it refuses i'm just like i genuinely imagine i'm innocent just imagine <laughs> so he tries again without opening the zip because it refused like it had kwamad so he tries again and it says the same thing explosives detected and i was just like at this point do you know i was doubting myself i was even like did somebody slip something inside my handbag when i was not looking or something i don't know i was just worried because i'm like do i actually have something <laughs> so anyways um then he's like ay lazima tufungue hii bag i said okay so he ripped my zip up to date i've never fixed that zip but anyways he ripped my zip open and then he tried again and finally it was like all clear or something like that it was now green and i was just like ay okay haya so he moved from that problem to the next problem so I now go find my gate properly. I sit down and then, you know, in the airport, there are so many of these monitors. I look at the monitor. It shows my flight is boarding. I was like, can't a girl just catch a break? Just, just like a small one, just a small break. Yeah. Ah, so it says my flight is boarding. So I go to, I quickly go to this. There's a man standing in front of one of the, entrances into the plane into a certain plane and i got him i'm like um okay so my flight says it's boarding where should i go he's like what flight is it i show him my ticket he's like flight yako bado i'm looking at this guy and i'm like but it's showing on the monitor that my flight is boarding and he's like ah flight ya flight yako bado i was just like you know what let me just go sit down and just relax you know I go sit down and then usually there's ladies in a speaker or people in a speaker making announcements at the airport so the speaker goes on and it's a lady she announces someone's name she's like this is so and so final call for flight this and this and this and it sounded exactly like my flight i was sitting there wondering have they given up on me do they did they forget i'm also a passenger in this flight because yeah, they are calling other people and they're not calling me ah so anyways um i got this man again okay i feel like i apologize to whoever this man was but yeah i got him again and i'm like are you sure my flight hasn't like he's not boarding he's true what what he's like apana bado like bado yako i said you know what it is what it is literally so let me fast forward because i like i said i don't want the video to be too long so i fast forward um to fast forward i sit back down and then finally they call out my flight so i don't know actually what was going on so they finally call my flight i board what not get on the flight the food was the food was amazing it was lufthansa and i had rice and chicken and it was it was very nice and it's because i had watched so many videos in anticipation of me traveling and most of the videos were being done by nigerians 
and nigerians were all ordering the same thing it was like mac and cheese or something like that and they were all complaining like how the food is not good and whatnot so i didn't expect much yeah anyways so hard food got to so this was now my flight to from nairobi to germany frankfurt germany which was eight hours 40 minutes yeah eight hours 40 and then got to germany had like a five hour layover guys the way i got lost in that airport oh my days i seriously got lost in that airport and i kept walking and walking and walking and walking and walking it was just it was crazy because i don't know i don't know why the signs were not working for me i always found myself in the wrong place or at a dead end i don't know but yeah, i got lost in the germany airport but i had enough time to get lost i had five hours then from germany boarded the flight to vancouver which was 10 hours 40 around that so basically 11 hours like that now this flight was the epitome of disappointment okay I'm, okay i'm exaggerating but <laughs> um the flight was fine it's just the food got me sick instantly yani it didn't take a second for my stomach to react because i had meatballs and mashed potatoes but they didn't even say it was meatballs these guys were like it's beef beef and and mashed potatoes so i was like that sounds so good so of course i got that so kumbe it was meatballs but i didn't mind the meatballs tasted so bad i've never had such flavorless i don't even know what to say about those meatballs it was flavorless it was i've never tasted anything like that for real so my stomach reacted instantly and imagine you have a whole i had a whole what like nine nine more hours i'm a seven more hours in a plane and your stomach is not okay so it was just the worst flight so got to vancouver and then now so vancouver was my point of entry so again now this flight i don't know what was going on but what i'm going to say is at your point of entry and point by point of entry i mean if you're going to canada you're and you're not okay so like you see how for me i was going from vancouver to now kamloops so kamloops and vancouver are both in canada just just to clarify yeah um so my point of entry into canada was vancouver so that's what i mean like the very first place you enter if you're going into the u.s your point of entry the first place in the u.s you're going to land that's your point of entry whatever so my point of entry was vancouver and at your point of entry you must always always no matter what anybody tells you always go into immigration first so i didn't do that because in the on the plane they announced like when we landed they were like oh you should first go through where and where and where and i was just like oh okay this is different so me i took myself that but i should have known i should have known because i was the only one from that flight going in that direction everybody else is going another direction so yeah so anyways went somewhere i was not supposed to go and then eventually went to immigration so now we are reaching the immigration section which is what i know most of you are waiting for so immigration um got there there was a there was such a long line long line so you queue you make a line and then there's like a screen where you do um what do i call it is it um it's like you claim stuff or i don't know how to i don't know how to phrase but and then you get they like it's it's guy where are my words okay so the screen you say if claim not claiming anyways so the screen you do your stuff you put in your details um and then you say if you brought some stuff into canada certain things and stuff like that and then um 
from there you now go into the other line <laughs> you go into the other line and then the a first person a, like a guy who's just standing there so you show him your documents so that's the first person and then you go into the other line so there's like three lines guys that process is long so you go into the other line now which is now the final line to enter the the room where the immigration people are so that line took so much time and then when you enter i cannot even let you guys those guys actually look intimidating the ones for canada because that's what i'm speaking about so those guys actually look intimidating but the thing is i feel like if you look confident they're just like they don't care you know what i mean so hey but they were being harsh like how on a time they don't have time for people or nonsense or like irritation <laughs> they don't have time for that because i remember when i was sitting there they were calling out people's names so they were it's like a booth it's like when you're going to the bank and there's so many tellers so there's a guy at each station and each of them of course is dealing with an individual and they call out your name you go to them and they ask you questions so this is now where it all happens yeah so you can't hear the questions they ask the person but you can actually how does that anyways they know how they do their job but you could tell when they were getting frustrated by someone and i remember there was this guy who i don't think he could speak english and he was he was being asked his name no his birthday and he couldn't understand i felt so bad so he was just told to go back not home <laughs> not home but he was like i'll deal with you as like the last person or when i feel like something like that so you know these things it also depends on the person you get yeah so let me cut it short i now went there they called my name and i went there and i was so nervous guys i had prepared so many things because i watched so many videos and all these things only to be asked do you guys know what i was asked they were like oh so what are you coming to canada to do of course of course i was like i'm coming to study whatnot and then he's like i think he asked me for how long am i going to be in school something like that and of course i'm doing bachelor's so it's four years and then he's like so when is your birthday so i tell him and that was it i was like of course i was happy yeah but at the same time i was so irritated because i'm like i prepared so many things so many things like i had oh my god so like i was okay basically moral of the story is you don't know who you're going to meet and everybody's situation is different everybody's questions are different so mine i just got lucky all i was asked was my purpose in canada and my birthday and that was it he gave me my actual permit study permit and i left and that was basically it so that's my story guys <laughs> literally but what i'd say is it's always never a bad thing to be overly prepared you'd rather be over prepared than under prepared so again you know watch videos hear what people have been asked and yeah just prepare yourself so yeah thank you guys for watching i hope this video was helpful or at least interesting <laughs> to say the least um and yeah i'll see you guys in my next video so thank you bye guys